Hey guys, I'm Ryan, this is Future Riffs, and today we are going to do our second installment of our 15 minute exercise series. We're going to do one a month. Uh, we did one in July. We'll make sure that the link is in the uh, description of this video so that you guys can check it out. Uh, pretty much our kind of mission statement here is we're going to try to improve one technique at a time, even if your schedule is super duper busy. Uh, so today I get to bore you. I mean, no, it's going to be super interesting. I'm going to teach you guys how to do an Ionian scale. And I'm going to show you guys some different practicing methods that we're going to break down uh, and be able to uh, improve a lot of things. A whole flock of birds with one stone. Yeah, that's a little violent sounding. I really like birds. They're kind of cute. Don't hurt birds. So let me show you guys an Ionian scale. Let me start with a, a little preface on that. An Ionian scale is the first of seven modes. They all have ridiculous names. And the one thing I want you to remember about them is that even though today we're going to be playing in the key of G, they can take place anywhere. They uh, are not placement sensitive because they do not involve open strings. They are a closed form. So let me show you guys this scale. Uh, it's not going to it's not gonna be too difficult, but it would be good for you guys to watch my left hand and uh, follow my fingers, okay? So, starting on a G. I have a little bit of gain on my signal today. Also, I'm using my Mayflower through my HX Stomp. Uh, I just figured it'd be a little bit more fun to dirty it up just a hair. Okay, so here's that shape. We're starting with our pointer finger on third fret on the E string, and we're gonna go third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Then we're going to do the exact same pattern on the A string. So, so far I've gone three, five, seven, three, five, seven. Our next string is going to go up a half step. So D string starting at four, four, five, seven. Same thing on the next string. So four, five, seven, four, five, seven. Then the last two strings are the same patterns as well. They are five, seven, and eight. So all of them together. So you may recognize this pattern, and you also might wonder why I pass the octave. Because it sounds like I should end early, but modes are more about how many notes you can play in one position of your key signature. So let's run it over one more time. Same exact thing, I won't speak, I'm going to run it up and down, ascending and descending. <laughs> So the Ionian scale uh, encompasses every natural note in its key signature, starting from the root and ascending all the way until you run out of notes in that position. Uh, as we fill in the modes, as we're going to do in later videos, uh, you're going to see that you're able to climb up the neck of your guitar uh, and keep your wits about you. You're going to really be able to follow along with where you are. So if you've ever been soloing and get lost and you don't know, you know, oh no, like where's the right note? Uh, no modes are an incredible way to keep your wits about you while soloing and doing all sorts of that type of stuff. So here's the exercises. The first one is going to be right hand alternate picking. Uh, we are going to do a mixture for the first five minutes. You're going to warm up running it ascending and descending until you really feel good. And then we're going to string skip. So let me do the first one. I'll probably run it three times in a row for now. Pick whatever speed is comfortable for you. 
After you feel really nice and warm and you, you're not missing a lot of notes on your run through, start a string skipping exercise. Uh, you should make the first five minutes, this should be the majority of that practice. Check this out. I'm going to go three, five, seven. Then I'm going to skip the A string and I'm going to go to four, five, seven on the D string. I have two focuses here. The main one being to play the right notes. Duh. Uh, the second one is when you skip a string, uh, one, you have to really aim with your right hand, and two, you don't want any sort of string noise. And what I mean by that is when I skip over that A string, I don't want to hear it at all. You know, that kind of trashy sound. You want nice and clean. Two separate strings at two separate times, one note at a time, that type of deal. Then I'm going to come back to the A string and go to the G. So I'll go. That's your exercise right there. You can follow this pattern all the way through the entire scale as well. Uh, I think that that's kind of melodic sounding, so I like keeping it there uh, as far as an exercise. It's hard for me to wrap my head around exercises when I don't feel like there's some melody involved. And when you extend it to the entire length of the scale, uh, it turns back into a little bit of a rudiment, which is incredible and important, but it's nice to keep melody about us. Here, let's do the whole thing just to hear it. Oh, that's a nice job, that big one. I need to work on that one myself. on that this month too. I might even give you guys an update. Don't quote me. <laughs> okay, so that's our first five minutes. You've warmed up with playing your scale, ascending and descending, and now you're string skipping. Now, the next thing that I want you to do is work on a legato technique with the exact same scale. So we are going to try to get the same volume note while still using our proper fingers on every single string. So we're gonna go pick, If you notice that your pinky isn't quite giving you the volume that you want, because that's probably the finger that's gonna give you some trouble, uh, make sure that you're striking as high up in the fret like as close to the next highest number fret. So for example, if you're playing in seven, you want your pinky to almost be an eight because then when the hammer comes down on the string, your string doesn't have to travel as far to the metal fret that's creating your tone. Uh, always try to play at the head of your frets. So if you're in third fret, play close to fourth fret. Uh, you are going to get your best tone that way. And it's going to make a lot of techniques a lot easier. Uh, bar chords, all sorts of things will clear up if you play in the very front part of your fret. So let's play this thing legato. too fast for me to run descending. I can do it ascending at that speed. But descending, I gotta, I need to slow it down and work on it myself. So yeah, maybe I should do an update. Maybe I should uh, play the, you know, the heck out of this thing all month and see if I can pick up our speeds. 
maybe someone challenged me to a BPM test or something. That would be kind of hysterical. I'd be pretty down for that. Uh, so anyway, we are working on those hammer-ons and pull-offs just in this scale. And all at the same time, you are learning your uh, G major Ionian scale. So my last challenge for you, and this is supposed to be a 15 minute exercise, but I would be willing to bet that you'll have so much fun with the last part that you'll extend this, uh, which is I want you to improvise inside your Ionian scale. So you've alternate picked it up and down, you've string skipped, you've uh, done a legato exercise up and down. Uh, so now you should really know that scale pretty well. So let's improvise over it. I'm gonna loop my own chords. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do, now you don't have to loop your chords. YouTube is a great place. Just type in E minor backing track, G major backing track, any of those. Uh, will bring up pages of free backing tracks for you to jam to. Uh, and I use them all the time. I like to warm up with them at work, actually. That way it's not a chord progression that came out of my own head. I had to play over someone else's idea. It helps uh, keep me creative, I feel like. So I'm just going to do a real simple uh, set of chords and jam over them, you know, briefly. And I would encourage you guys to do it for at least five minutes. Where's my volume at? Here we go. I'm using a ditto looper to loop today. If you guys have a spare 80 bucks, I think they're about 80 bucks uh, laying around. You can't, you can't beat it. It's so worth it. I'm gonna turn my walrus audio back on so that I have a little bit of gain on my soloing signal. And now I'm only gonna play inside my Ionian. foreign to you creating your own riff try it just try it even if you think it's gonna be like a f super flop solo no one just enters the world of soloing flawlessly or at least i doubt it maybe there's someone out there that's got some sort of crazy story like that but oh steven says he's the perfect soloist and just was born that way so it's possible i guess everything's possible when you believe in I'm lying. He's lying. He said he's lying. So just try it. You can start with just ascending and descending scales over some chords and then put some pauses in there, turn around, do some string skipping, run my exercises over some chords. It'll sound like a solo and you'll start coming up with ideas. They'll start flowing out of you quickly. And really what it'll do is it'll help familiarize you with your Ionian scale. So that's it. That's 15 minutes. If you hit that daily, you're going to be a monster. Let me know how you guys like this video. Like, subscribe, eat a vegetable. I don't know. Do something with your whole life. Something important. I'm going to do something else now, though, not this. I already did this. This was my 15 minutes. Goodbye.